All right. Hey, everyone. And I'm going to hang on just a second before we really get going. I think we have a little technical difficulty on the Facebook side, which is kind of a big deal. So I'm going to check on this real quick. I appreciate you guys bearing with me. I see we have a few folks on the YouTube side. Thanks for hanging on, guys. Technology, it makes our lives easier and more complicated at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to try to go ahead and fix this. All right, and it looks like we are up and going. Sorry for the delay, everyone. I'm just uh, verifying that I'm speaking the truth here. <laughs> okay, I just got confirmation that they can see us. Okay, so we are live on Facebook now. Excellent. Does, does Leslie see us? Cool. And we're here. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, my, I'm joined today by the wonderful Dr. Carol Smea, the super brain behind the mine pet platter. Um, the more I learn about this thing, the more I want to go to every pet store in town and tell them to stop selling bowls. But <laughs> I guess dogs and cats got a drink out of something, right? So Carol, the mine pet platter is such a brilliant idea. You know, here is something that so many of us overlooked, right? We think about what you put in the bowl, what you put in front of your pet, but you don't think about uh, how you're serving it. Um, I have so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many. But first, before we get started with, you know, digging in and all of that, would you please just give us a brief overview of what the mind pet platter is? Sure. Um and I, I'm going to tell you a little story. Uh, my background is actually in psychology and sociology, and I used to study human feeding dynamics to see what motivates them, what drives food choices, all those sorts of things. And I had this adorable little Havanese named Pip who weighed exactly 14 pounds but would inhale her food so fast in probably about 25 seconds would let out the most horrendous belch. If I had people over, they'd have tears streaming down their eyes. I mean, it was just horrendous. Mm -hmm. And one day I was making her chicken breast and there were scraps and juices left over on the platter on the board. And my daughter said, why don't you give it to Pip? So I put it down and this dog for the next 15 minutes was moving around, totally ingratiated with it and looked up at me and, and was like, thank you, mom. So uh, this got me into exploring what just happened. And I realized that we have to start to look at our dogs, not just as dogs, but who are they really? And mm -hmm. when you look at their background, uh, their closest living relative is the gray wolf. They share over 94% of their DNA. And in fact, they're so close that they can actually breed together, which mm -hmm. is pretty amazing. And uh, believe it or not, 
the dog and the gray wolf have similar stomachs as well. It's pretty amazing, their digesti digestive system. So mm. we put all the pieces together. Uh, Brian Bailey wrote this great book that talks about celebrating the wolf in your dog. And that kind of took me down a path of looking at feeding from a dog's perspective, but understanding the instinctive feeding habits of pets. So the original Mind Pet Platter is designed to tap into all of their instinctive feeding traits and replicates how their ancestors eat in the wild, which leads to healthier eating, better digestion, and eating that is more engaged as well. And that hmm. kind of sums it up in a quick little uh, nugget there. Right. So you, you already had this, you were already in this mindset of, of studying how creatures eat, right? Because right. you're already kind of looking at the human side. And exactly. then, and then your dog cued you into, um, wait a minute, what's going on with these, these creatures that we treat like little humans sometimes, right? But they're, they're so different than us in so many ways. Well, <clears throat> and the interesting thing about it is when you look at the evolution of wolf becoming into the domesticated dog, we are the ones who changed their feeding ecology. Yeah. When they were in the wild, they relied on primarily large um, animals that they killed in packs. And that was primarily how they survived in the wild. Then as time went on, as they moved closer to um, different settlements, scatter feeding became sort of an easy way for them to get food with settlements, you know, throwing food out. Mm -hmm. But then somehow along the way, humans said, gee, why don't we put their food in a bowl? And that way we don't have to worry about food getting all over. We don't have to step on food in the house. Mm -hmm. And the bowl created a whole different set of feeding challenges. And so part of what I, I wanna talk a little bit about today mm -hmm. is take the time, watch your dog eat. If you're currently feeding from a bowl, really sit and watch that dog eat from the bowl and sort of think, is this how they're supposed to be eating? Is my dog really enjoying it? Because wolves spent 95% of their time in the wild looking, hunting, exploring for food. And we've basically taken that whole way of life and consolidated it into a 45 second gulp mm -hmm. where there's little enjoyment. And one of the things that I'm working on with Dr. Jeff Feynman is we're looking at the happiness of pets. Mm -hmm. Part of the happiness comes from how you feed them. Yep. Not only what you feed them, but how you feed them as well. And this is something you're seeing in zoos all across the country, right? Because before we were feeding zoo animals very similarly to how we feed um, our, our dogs at home. Um, like gorillas, for example, they would get all of their food in a pellet format that could be gone in about two minutes. Whereas in the wild, they would spend hours and hours chewing and chewing and tearing. And uh, once they started yeah, switching right. in their natural foods, they found they were they were feeling more enriched. They they were happier. Behavioral problems started to disappear. Absolutely. Um, in fact, I volunteer at the Lincoln Park Zoo uh -huh. and am in touch with people who work at different zoos. And um, I would encourage everybody to go see a carcass feeding. And uh I'd say probably about 50% of the zoos do this where they actually have a carcass and you can watch the animal take it apart and you really get an essence of how involved they are in the food system, their smelling, their movement, everything about it, but it gives you a whole different perspective. 
And even at the zoo, we're constantly working on enrichment. We're constantly working on finding new ways to create an exciting feeding ter territory for them. We'll even, when feeding the wolves, we'll throw certain things into a paper bag to make them use their sense of smell more. So um, we're always trying to avoid food monotony and to constantly engage the animal in the eating process. Yeah, that's such a natural part of their history. And I think it is for us as well. It's something that we've really fallen away from, right? Now our meals typically are sit in front of the computer or the TV and scarf something down in 10 seconds. Did I taste that? What did I just have for dinner? I don't even remember. Whereas it used to be such a big part of our lives. So I'm sure there's plenty of science on the human side as well going into, hey guys, we need to slow down. We need to be eating more natural, not just more natural diets, but in a more natural style. So the bowl kind of ruined everything for us. Well, and you know what? I, I pretty much uh, compare the bowl to eating out of a Chinese fast food container, you know, that you bring home. Oh, yeah. And it's sort of like when you get in there and you start eating, you eat so fast and you don't really taste your food at all. Mm -hmm. I can just tip it back. Exactly. <laughs> Like a boa constrictor, I yeah. We had a specific way of doing that. Oh, that's the trick. Yeah, absolutely. I get three chopsticks. That way you can get more leverage and you just scoop it back. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, the bowl, the bowl is really counterproductive to healthy eating. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I just want to sort of highlight a few things for people to think about. One is when you're feeding from a bowl, the food is piled high. Okay. And one of the key things we know about wolves as well as about dogs is they see the world through their nose. And yeah. when you're feeding from a container like this, it's sort of like they have no ability to smell or interact with the food because, you know, their noses most times don't even fit in and they're just plopping down on it. But when you think about it, they have over a hundred million sun sites in their noses to ours six million okay and, and then their brain actually, is they can heavy. actually smell a teaspoon of sugar in an olympic size pool one veterinarian wow. sort of calculated that out mm -hmm. so by putting it in a bowl it's almost like you're putting a covering on their nose and blinding them to the whole feeding experience and that's really kind of their main sensory organ, right? For us, we devote a lot of brain uh, processing power to vision. Right. Um, whereas with dogs, they've kind of swapped that for scent. And they can, that's really, like you said, how they see the world. Right. And in fact, in their brain, the area of the brain that decodes sense, uh, sense mm -hmm. is 40 times larger than ours. Wow. So that just shows you, and that's why blind dogs typically will do very well through the, mm -hmm. the sense of smell and learning to maneuver and navigate area. Right. I was barely using this vision thing to begin with. This is, right. I, I just use my nose to get around. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's when you multiply that, I mean, you're, they have 20 times more receptors in their nose, right? We have 6 million, five, 6 million, they have a hundred million. And then their brains are 40 times more tuned to sense. I mean, right. that is a significant, we can't even begin to imagine the things they can smell and the way that they can process it. That's a little bit mind blowing. Exactly. And, you know, if you ever wonder why your dog is licking their nose, it's so they can get the sense to stick to the nose and mm. especially on the inside of the nose with the mucous membrane. So that that is really what they are paying attention to. And I, I want to talk about it as honoring their nose. If mm. we pay more attention to it, I think we're going to have help, healthier pets and happier pets as well. Well, I, I love that idea of honoring. Honoring the pet as a whole. I mean, obviously honoring their nose, but... I think we have uh, a real propensity for viewing all of the pets in our house through our human eyes. Oh, my my gecko is happy. My gecko is sad. My <laughs> my cat likes this. My cat doesn't like this. You know, we personify everything. Um, 
but I, I think really not being as conceited, not putting everything in human terms all the time and trying to really honor our pets for what they are, because they are absolutely amazing. Um, and this is something that I absolutely love you for, is you are an advocate out there talking to so many different people, teaching us to see our pets through as they are, rather than the way that we imagine them to be. Right. So right. thank and, you for doing that. Yeah. Uh, thank you. This, this is great fun. And what I enjoy most of all, people contact me saying they, ex they discovered new things about their dog. They're mm -hmm. interacting with their dogs differently. And yeah. they're also more engaged in making the food because, you know, when you have this kind of surface, boy, can you play around with the different types of toppers or protein bites or whatever you want to do. And to create this maze where your dog's nose is just like, oh, my God, mom, what have you done? This is fantastic. So uh, part of my excitement is bringing the dog and the pet parent closer together. And mealtime becomes fun. Mm -hmm. It becomes exploratory. And, you know, you're giving your dog more and more attention. And that's bringing more joy to their life as well. It's almost like you're building a maze for them and then watching them go through it. Exactly. That's, yeah, that's so cool. So I, we're getting a little into the site, which I love the science and I want to go deeper and I just want to keep talking about it. But the I pet think platter, you're the one in, into the science area, Brad. I love it. Oh, I, I can't help it. I, I just dive way too deep into that. Guys, just so you know, we have several more parts to this discussion planned and we want to get really in depth uh, in some of these. So I'm trying yeah. not to go too deep in the first one. Um, <laughs> That and I know well, that for some of you guys and for me, the mind pet platter is kind of a. I'm less familiar with really how to use it and what all these yeah. divots are and what the the trail is going around the outside. So, um, I would love a quick kind of walkthrough, maybe, and some cool ideas that you'd like to do with it. Sure. Well, uh, some of the fun things and and I let me bring this one thing up. Yeah. Most people serve their pet in the corner of a kitchen. And that is the worst place that you could ever feed your pet. And part of the reason for that is you're blinding their peripheral vision. They, their hearing is so powerful. We, we have a wolf at the zoo who will start howling. And eight minutes later, we hear this particular siren come wow. and he's alerting us to the fact that this siren is coming. Wolves can hear up to 10 miles away. Dogs mm. can hear up from two to four to even five miles away. And they hear at much higher frequencies as well. So mm. while you think there's nothing going on in the kitchen, they are hearing this cacophony of sounds behind them. Then mm. their eyes, which are a 20 degree angle, they can't see because of the sides of the bowl and the sides of the wall at the kitchen. And so it becomes a scary place. There's all this activity going on and they don't know how to handle it. This leads to food dumping, relocating mm. your food elsewhere. And I promise you, if you have a finicky eater, especially those that have to be hand fed, the pet platter will solve it. We used to have our bowl in the corner of the dining room shared kitchen area. And the little dog would pick his kibble up and move it over so he could turn around and see. And then he would eat. And the big dog would take a few big bites and then he'd walk out and then he'd come back and then he'd turn around and look at you. And then he'd <laughs> go back and eat some more. Oh, so absolutely. I'm 100% familiar with that behavior. Um, yeah. I mean, dogs in the wild, they have to eat very competitively, right? It, this is, right. it's a, dangerous place where you really have to have your senses about you. If you're a dog, you're in a pack usually. Well, right. And this is why there are no sides on the pet platter. Mm. And we tested out a number of different shapes and sizes that this gives your dog the ability to see and 360 degree views. 
but also it gives them control over their feeding environment, which reduces anxiety. In the mm -hmm. wild, I don't think people realize this, especially with small prey. I've seen uh, videos where a, a wolf will have a rabbit and they'll always circle because they want to get a view. Is anybody going to come in and, and mm -hmm. get my prey? And I've seen another wolf come in within half a second that just looks like a streak. Right. So their senses are programmed for survival in the wild and having vision and also having movement, that circular behavior gives them psychological comfort that I don't have to worry anybody's gonna come and take my food at all. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing about the pet platter is um, this actually represents a carcass hmm. and you spread the food all over the surface. And the point of this is because they're not pulling meat from the carcass bone, you want to make sure that they're picking up smaller pieces. Mm -hmm. So the pet platter allows them to do food selection the foods they want to eat first, second, and third, because nutritionally they will eat what their bodies need. And that also slows them down, stimulates their mind because they're smelling throughout the entire meal. Right. They can smell there's two grams more heart in this bite. There's a half a gram more liver in that bite. I'm going to prioritize this stuff. I need some of these extra amino acids, a few more vitamins and minerals. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Wow. And even uh, when they deconstruct carcasses in the wild, mm -hmm. I've even seen some which will pull out different organs and line them up, and then they'll eat in the order that they want them. So wow. by opening the, the feeding surface to your pet, you're opening up their entire mind. You're giving them control over their feeding environment, which is also exciting and stimulating to them. It's something they might not have even realized they wanted. Exactly. But it, it's so it programmed into them that DNA memory goes so deep. Yeah. Wow. That is so, that's mind blowing. Then the little scoops here are mm -hmm. to resemble the ends of bones. Mm -hmm. And the reason we put those in there is licking releases positive endorphins in the brain, which is both rewarding and relaxing. Mm -hmm. But I do want to warn people you don't want a feeding device where there is obsessive compulsive rapid licking and everything in the pet platter is designed so the dog's tongue can fit and get every speck of food if you mm -hmm. have a device where food can get caught in corners mm -hmm. the dog given their powerful noses they're smelling the food but their tongue can't get at it and that yeah. leads to obsessive compulsive licking which leads to behavioral disorders. And I also work with a vet who discovered that it's causing neck problems because wow. they stand very rigid and tense trying to get at them. Really? Yep. Yeah, really trying to get that last little bit out from that little, that little rubber cross or something like that. Yeah, I've seen a lot of different styles of um, mats and things like that out there. And they're yeah. usually designed to almost they look like they're designed to frustrate the dog a little bit where they, you know, it's very hard to get the food out of some of these compartments. And that's just it. It does cause frustration and mm -hmm. it's basically counterproductive to healthy eating because it can develop into aggressive behavior. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, honoring that nose, you yeah. begin to realize if there is food caught in there or if the material cracks and it gets in there, that dog drive, it, it operates by feast or famine. So yeah. they're going to go after every speck of food. They're instinctively driven to do that. Hmm. And they and can't just go, I give up. I'm going to use my finger. That, right. that is their only tool is the tongue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the sides here, which you can also use to put food in, um, mm -hmm. sort of resemble the rib cages of the animals. Wow. So, and their tongue, again, it's designed so the tongue fits in there so they can lift the food up from there. Mm -hmm. And then just being able to move in the way they want to. If you have an arthritic dog, if you have a sick dog, 
if you have any sort of problem, they can position their body in a way that's comfortable for them. And, you know, let your dog engage in it the way they want to. And another fun thing with the pet platter is you can freeze liquids on here. Mm -hmm. So bone broth, goat's milk, whatever you want to, put it on, pop it in the freezer, and they'll lick and lick and lick and lick and be sound asleep by the time you get home. I used to leave that as a treat for Pip all the time before I left. Oh, that's a great idea. And it's not like something will get trapped in there. And so he'll tear it up while you're gone. You can feel safe leaving it with him. Yeah. 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 I, I see we have a, a question about the colors. That's so mm -hmm. good that you caught on that. Um, there, it comes in three colors, <clears throat> red, goldenrod, and teal. And the reason for that is they have a different color spectrum than we do. So we selected the colors that they can see and differentiate between. And the importance of that is if you have more than one dog, we recommend that they get different colors. And the color they're first served on, they'll adopt as their personal feeding territory. And they respect the color of the other dog's color platter. So it actually reduces food aggression and food stealing. Again, looking at life, and feeding from how a dog looks at it. So mm -hmm. just by changing these colors, you can solve a lot of problems that you have in your own home. That's so cool. Every bit of this has been so thoroughly thought out. This is super duper cool. Yeah. Uh, and I, I see another question here. Uh, you don't have to worry about bacteria on here. This is dishwasher safe bottom rack, non-porous. So um, it's, it's great. It cleans very, very easily and you don't have to worry about it. Awesome. I love dishwashers. I, I just got a dishwasher like three years ago. And I mean, I grew up with one and then I, I, uh, I married my wife and she didn't have one. You know, I moved into, we, we shared a house and, um, yeah. <clears throat> and so I went like, seven eight years without one and then i just got one and it's like oh it has to go in the dishwasher please <laughs> <laughs> that's great first world problems i know oh, dear. <laughs> so before i get too distracted i did want to you you asked me to mention this and i do want to call this out um you guys recently changed your facebook page right yes okay and i know you got so much good information on there and you guys are always doing cool stuff like this. So I am really quick just going to post the link for the new Facebook page. Oh, thanks so much. We sure do appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Anything I can do to make it easier for folks to find you guys because, you know, you're out there really helping animals. Um, that's what I'm all about. That's what I'm here for. Uh oh, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. And we'll have to plan a Steve's meal on here. How about that, Brad? Yeah, absolutely. I'm. Uh, I just ate dinner, but next time. <laughs> Actually, we've had five people <laughs> buy this for themselves to slow down their eating. Wow, really? Yes, we have. <laughs> that that is crazy. Maybe I'll have to try that. <laughs> I always just tried to chew more, but maybe that's a good way to get myself to slow down just a little bit. Oh goodness! So, um. Before we we go on and answer any more questions, I did promise that we'd be doing kind of a fun giveaway. And I'd love to do that right now, um, just to hook some people up with some stuff, especially I know that, you know, sometimes uh, you have half an hour and then you have to go do stuff. I'm sure some of you guys have to go make dinner or something else like that. So, um, <clears throat> so what I am going to be, what we're going to do today is a little drawing for some of our new gut health bites, some of our new protein bites. These are super duper awesome. Um, we partnered up with Gussie's Gut to make them, and Gussie's Gut is such a cool company, the dog microbiome company. Um, they produce this really awesome naturally fermented um, blend that we add to the protein bites. That's an awesome source of uh, probiotics and all sorts of good stuff. I'm not going to go on about them too long, but um, 
If you're interested in taking home a bag of protein bites, just comment now. Comment now on this uh, on this feed that's going on. In just a second, I'll I'll hit the drawing button. We'll pick a couple bags of protein bites, and then I think we have a, a special prize, a, a one that's really themed for what we're doing here tonight. So I'm excited for that one too. I just found out about it, so I'm thrilled. Um, there's something else we wanted to tell people, right? Before I get too off track. Uh, well, if uh... We are offering, we really appreciate that you're having us on to help spread the science of feeding to your customers and viewers as well. So we love partnering with you on events. You really put TLC into the quality of your food. So if you go to our website at mine, M-I-N-E, petplatter.com and put in the coupon code STEVES, no apostrophe, just Steve's, you'll get 10% off on the pet platter. Does is, is the Steve's have to be uh, capitalized, not capitalized? Does it not matter? It doesn't matter. Okay. I'm going to hit the answer button and post that too for you guys. It's, it's our way of saying thank you. And together, sharing the science of feeding, we're going to have healthier and happier dogs. And that's why we're all on this mission together. It's the best mission to be on. I couldn't think of a I, better thing to be doing. <laughs> absolutely. I know. I, I, I love this so much. So years ago in another life, I was actually working in the film industry. Um, and I get to work on movies and TV shows and stuff like that. And I was not happy at all. You know, it's just it was not fulfilling. It was not for me. And I, I came back to Michigan and I was just struggling for what I was going to do next. And I was thinking of breaking into the industry here. And uh, I started working at a pet store um, and oh my God, I fell in love with helping animals through food. Oh, wow. And the, the deeper you get, the more people you find who are just so devoted to helping our pets just live better lives. And so, yeah, there's no better place to be. It is the best place on earth. So I totally agree. Do you know what I love about it too is pet parents today are reaching out for more and more information. Yes. And pet parents are relying on other pet parents these days for good information. And I think that's what makes us such a special community. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It's just this group of love. It's so cool. <laughs> It's like a big old family. A kumbaya moment. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. All right, guys. So it looks like we have 19 entries. I'm going to switch. I'm going to share my screen. Give me just a second. I didn't line this up ahead of time, so I have to remember how to do it. Usually I do this before we get started. Oh, they changed the interface, too. All right, I'll figure this out. <clears throat> there it is. All right, so I'm going to hit this magic draw button and we'll pick somebody to take home some protein bites. I love this little giveaway tool. It's just so cool seeing everyone pop up on there. I get excited even though I'm not going to win nothing. All right, Kathy Lucas Parker, congratulations. Super duper cool. I love that picture on there. Of that is that an Airedale? So pretty. Oh, that's great. Oh, so super cool. We will, um, we will send you a Kathy. congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> we will send you a message on Facebook to get your, uh, your mailing information. Um, we don't just magically know where you live. This tool is not that good yet. All right. Let's draw one more time for another bag of protein bites. I love Airedales by the way. Um, they're such a cool breed. Of course I love all the breeds, but I have a special place in my heart for Airedales. All right, Kirby, congratulations. Congratulations, Kirby. Super duper cool. Okay, now I'm going to pull this uh, this banner back. There we go. And I got a different one to put up. I'm excited about this one. All right, so I was just told a minute ago that we <laughs> also have a mine pet platter to give away to somebody lucky here tonight. So give me just a second over here on this end. I'm going to hit the reset button on our drawing machine. 
All right. And those of you guys who have already entered for the protein bites, you actually don't have to enter again. Um, but if anyone was like, nah, I already have protein bites. I don't need any more of those and did not bother to enter. Now is your chance if you want to take home a mite and pet platter. Um, super duper cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and before, before I hit this magic button, Carol. Yes. Is there anything else you want to share tonight about the pet platter? Um, this half hour feels like it. it has absolutely flown by. And I think we just barely scratched the surface. And I know that both of you and I want to keep going on and on and on. So tonight, is there anything else you want to share before our next session? Um, I'll tell you one thing, which I would love is videotape your dog eating out of a bowl. And then if you get a pet platter or you have something flat, okay, observe the difference, okay? I think you'll be amazed. We typically feed our pets, just put it down, and we're onward. I want you to look at the lack of satisfaction that dogs have. They scoop it up in three or four bites and down. And I'll tell you why they eat faster out of a bowl. And at some point in time, we can talk about food bloat. Mm -hmm. What happens is because of the feast or famine and because the bowl is more of a threatening feeder, what they do is use their lower jaw to push the food against the side of the bowl. And it acts as a backward conveyor belt. So wow. it shovels more food and air into the dog's stomach, which is why there's so many gas issues and uh, indigestion with different pets. Hmm. So we'll be talking a lot about this, especially for flat face breeds. The poor dogs, everything is hitting into their snout and their face. And it's, it's really an uncomfortable way to eat. And I always talk about, for example, with slow feeders, anything projecting into the dog's face mm -hmm. and their snout, that's how they see the world. We want to honor the snout. We don't want anything pushing into it. So really <clears throat> look at your dogs, videotape them, sit and watch them and say, we're going to have a new relationship with food and we'll get some good Steve's food to put on our platter. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's almost like getting poked in the eyes every time you go to eat, you know, <laughs> that's, it is. It's gotta like be awful, yeah. at a table and somebody taking a spoon and pushing it into your face. Right. Yeah. If we, if that was happening to us, we would redesign the cutlery immediately. Right. <laughs> so we, need, we need to do that for our dogs. And that's what I love that we're doing here today. It's super duper cool. Oh God. That's great. That's great. I always think of uh, dogs eating out of a bowl, kind of like a pie eating contest, which I have like this. I will never enter a pie eating contest because the idea of shoving your face, getting it all over your face is like horrific to me, but also getting it up your nose, just like, oh man, I, you're just viscerally creepy yeah. to me. So uh, my poor well, dog. And, and remember it, um, the inside of the nasal cavity is mucous membrane. And when mm -hmm. food gets shoved up there, it can dry it out. Mm -hmm. And if dogs don't have a moist mucous membrane, they can't smell. They're blinded, basically. Yeah. Basically blinded. So you want to be careful. Whatever you're using, you don't want food or any other objects go going up into the nasal cavity like that. It does blind them. Yeah. Man. Once you know better, you do better, right? <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, um, go ahead. Kirby. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't hit the button yet. Oh, okay. That would be crazy if Kirby won <laughs> twice. Man, I'd say just yeah, go out and play Kirby the lottery. Twice here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to hit the button and let's see what happens. For a minute, I thought it would be Kirby again. And I would just be like, whoa, <laughs> Cheryl, oh, congratulations. congratulations. Oh, look at that sweet pea. 
<laughs> right? Oh, so cute. I love the expression too. Uh, what a beautiful dog. My great. Chucky, my golden retriever is so, he has so many different facial expressions. It's just hilarious to watch. You can almost understand what he's saying just through his eyebrows alone. He's just right. hilarious. So I love dogs like this that have that. You can see, you can almost feel their emotions. And again, that's me putting human aspects on a dog, right? But you right. can almost feel what he's saying through his expression. Oh, uh, that's great. That's great. All right. Well, congratulations, Cheryl. And Susan, so, we're, we're going to have the 10% off uh, up for a while, okay? So um, we're, we're working hard with Steve, Steve's, and Brad has been great, and we're going to be doing more talking, so we're going to keep that on for a while. Andrea, thank you for the question. Um, for color choices, I have five pop. Uh, can I use the cat mats for dogs? What cat mats? I don't think you don't have specific cat mats, do you? No. Um, the the small bone platter can be used for cats, mm -hmm. and uh. In fact, um, we have a lot of information on, on cats as well um, that we'll be happy to send you. But cats love this, again, because they have complete view. But the other thing is they can perch themselves at the end of the platter, and it gives them 360-degree views. And the importance of that is they'll slow down their eating because if they, they can jump nine feet high mm -hmm. and if they see anything that becomes threatening to their prey, it gives them the ability to see it and launch. So this really slows down cat food, the cats eating, um, slows down the eating and they love it as well. Mm -hmm. We all need to slow down a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if you have five pops, I wish we had five different colors, but um, what I would do is if you have some pops that are more affable, um, I would use similar colors for the affable ones where you're, there's no food stealing. That's what we typically recommend with more than one dog. Awesome. I never would have asked the color question. And so I'm so glad that somebody uh, watching tonight asked us about that. Yeah. Real eye opener. I'm, I'm so excited for our next session to learn even more because I know that your science, the science behind all of this is like 10 feet deep, right? You have probably a stack. I bet your desk is just made of papers from all the research you've done. So. Yeah. Well, this has been a joy. Thank you for letting me talk away. And I hope everybody will join us uh, for learning more scientific detail. But I think I'm going to interview you, Brad. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that, those are actually my favorite. I love, I love just being able to answer questions and chat rather than having to think them up and try to steer. Oh, man, I hate that side. <laughs> I don't hate it. I actually love it. But, you know, it's... Hello. It's more work. <laughs> and, yes. It's so, work. so Carol, if people want to learn more, uh, what should they do? Should they go to your Facebook? Um, should they go to your website? Go to our website. You you can go to our Facebook. Um, also, Instagram. And mm -hmm. we do, uh, Stephanie, who's my wonderful social media person, has created these wonderful posts. Uh, that really educate on the fine points of feeding your pet and how to improve it. And also giving different ideas about how to use a pet platter. And we also deal with different issues such as, um, you know, if you have an older dog who's losing their eyesight, uh, the color of the platter can make a difference. If you have a dark floor, get a bright color platter, if you have a light floor, floor, colored floor, get a dark color platter. It helps them see the perimeter of their feeding territory and it reduces the frustration and it allows for healthier eating as well. So uh, people write into us about, you know, different issues they have with their pets. We share other pet parent information and that of course our website at mindpetplatter.com. 
Awesome. Super duper cool. So yeah, guys, go check out and learn some more, but don't learn too much because we will have some upcoming <laughs> sessions. Um, we will have some more conversations. Um, yeah. I don't have those posted yet, so I can't tell you when they're going to be, but hopefully pretty soon. And if people have any specific questions, please go to our info site at info at Mind Pet Platter. If you have any specific issues about how you're feeding or if your dog has a particular problem, we are always here to help because our, our team, we are committed to healthier and happy eating for each and every dog. And we care about each and every dog. So please don't hesitate to contact us. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Carol. Um, for everyone who's watching, I did just want to let you know, um, near the end of March, March 29th and March 30th, we're going to be doing a special webinar. It's the first time we're presenting this one all about the microbiome. Um, it's going to be an awesome introduction to the canine microbiome, which will also be applicable, applicable to the cat microbiome, your microbiome. Um, it's going to be a really fun webinar and I'm very, very, very excited about it because microbes are a personal, personal passion of mine. I'm really, really into them. So, um, I just posted the link for it there on the comments. Feel free to give that a click, sign up for it. Um, and I would love to see you there. Also just keep an eye on the Steve's Real Food Facebook page because before too long, we will post our next session, our next conversation with, um, Carol. So. Thank you so much. It's been a delight. Thanks for having me. It's been fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait to come back and talk to you again. Thank you guys all so much for being so active in the chat and giving um, Leslie a run for her money in there. Um, <laughs> just absolutely terrific. I love to see the chat just going, going, going as we're talking away. So thank you all so much. Thank you, Leslie, for being so active in the chat as well and helping everyone out. And you guys all have a great night. Now go give your dogs a belly rub. Take them out for a walk. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks.